Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we're looking at algebra tiles. We're going to talk about integers, variables, and we're going to practice with solving them using algebra tiles. So let's get into it. First of all, what is an algebra tile? It's basically a visual way of representing numbers and variables. So in our example, I'm going to use the color green for positive numbers and the color red for negative numbers. I'm going to start with this pretty straightforward question just to set it up and show you how they work. 5 minus 3. You probably know that 5 minus 3 is 2. Very good. But this is the way it would look like using algebra tiles. I would look at those two integers, 5 and then the 3 has a negative in front of it. So instead of doing minus 3, I'm going to think of that as negative 3. So I'll have 5 positives and 3 negatives. And then I start to cancel them out. In other words, I say 1 negative and 1 positive, that equals 0. 1 negative, 1 positive, that equals 0. 1 negative, 1 positive, that equals 0. So 3 of the numbers actually cancel each other out, and I'm left with 2 positive numbers. In other words, 5 minus 3 is 2. Again, you already knew 5 minus 2 was 3, but this is a visual way of showing that, and now we're going to make it into questions that might seem a little bit more challenging when you're working with these positive and negative numbers. Here's an example that I think helps to show why this has value. So this one I have negative 5 plus 3. With negative 5 plus 3 I'm going to set it up in this way. I have 5 negatives and I have 3 positives. Notice my negative numbers are still red, my positive numbers are still green. I put them on opposite sides, it doesn't matter because I'm going to start checking them off now. So I'm going to check off one positive for every negative, one positive for every negative, one positive for every negative. There we go. And what I'm left with this time is negative 2. So sometimes when we're adding numbers, this becomes, or subtracting integers, it becomes complicated. And this is where we can use those algebra tiles to really show what we're doing. All right. Now we're going to talk about one more thing. If you can solve this one on your own without any help, that would be fantastic. Go ahead and try that one out, and then I'll show you the answer for it. Try it out. All right, this is a very common question. This is opposites, a negative 2 and a positive 2. When we write them out in our, our algebra tiles, we draw them out, we'll have two negatives, two positives and they cancel each other out completely, leaving us with nothing, and that is zero. This is a fundamental truth in math, that opposites, when you add them together, they give you zero, all right? They're called additive inverses. This is what happens when you add these opposites. And the reason this is important is because this is exactly what we're doing. For every one that we cancel out, a positive and a negative, we're basically saying negative one plus positive one equals zero. Negative one and positive one gives us zero, and that's why we can cancel out these, these boxes or these algebra tiles. Let's look at um, an example where we look at numbers and letters together. For this, what we're going to do is introduce the variable tile. The variable tile is a little bit larger. I'm going to use the same colors, green for positive, red for negative, and I'm going to label them with an X. Oftentimes, the, the algebra tiles will be labeled that way, but they can be used for any variable, and I'll show an example of that later. First off, let's go ahead and give a question, 6X minus X. When I'm given this question, 6x is like 6x's, or 6 of those positive variables. So I would write out 6, and that minus x becomes 1 negative x. I also like this question because it shows us we don't write the number 1 in front of x when there's just one of them. So x means that you just have 1. And because it's minus x or negative x, it will be red. Now we're going to cancel out by 
checking off one positive for every negative. And then we look at what we have left, which is five X's. So what this is telling us is six X minus one X is equal to five X. Again, this question itself is not terribly complicated, but I like using simple examples for our first example to help us get started. Let's look at another one. This one here is a practice question, and I've done something a little different here. You've noticed that I changed the variable. Now it's 4a minus 5a. If it helps, you can write a on your, on your algebra tiles. That's absolutely fine. Or you can remember that usually they're labeled with an x, but it just means that this variable, our positive variable, is equal to our negative variable. You have to have the same letter to be able to join them together, but honestly, when, when it's written out, it doesn't matter which letter it is. So I want you to go ahead and try that one out. Again, if it's playing with your mind to see a letter X and a letter A, just go ahead and pretend that that's a letter A on those variable tiles, or you can write the letter A on your own. Use the tiles to try and join together these two terms. Go for it. All right, this is what I did. And I'm gonna leave them as the letter X just because I'm pretending that I have a physical tile here and maybe it's already written on them. So I have four positives and five negatives. Then I'm going to check them off one at a time, right? One positive and one negative equals zero. Another positive, another negative, until we get to what's left. All that I have left is one negative variable tile. Now I know my variables are A, so my final answer is going to be negative A. Remember, I would not write negative one A, I would just write negative A. That one was a little bit tricky, so if you're sticking with me, awesome, excellent job. Because now is when it gets to be really fun. We're going to mix together integers, which are positive and negative numbers, and variables. We're going to be using the, the symbols that you see there. Our variables will be those tall blocks with the X's in them. Our numbers will be the squares. And green is positive, red is negative. I'm going to show you the first example, and then I'll give you a practice question that you can try on your own. Here's my sample question. 3X plus 4 minus 5x. The way I would set it up is I would grab my variable tiles, three of the x's or three of the variables, four numbers, and they're positive, so they're going to be green, and I have minus 5x or negative 5x. So I'm going to have five red variable tiles. Now I can cancel them out by finding the things that are exactly the same and are both positive and negative. In this case, I have three positives, so I can cancel out three negatives. And that tells me that what I have left is those two negative x's, and I still have these four left over. So my final answer would look something like this. I have negative two of the variables, negative 2x, plus 4, because those are positive 4 that are left over. And that's how we would use variable tiles to answer this type of question. This, by the way, type of question is often called joining like terms. You might hear that phrase. All right, let's take a look at our practice question. I want you to try this one out. It's got a lot to it, but I think you can do it. Take those um, those algebra tiles, try using them together and see what you get. Three, two, one, go for it. Hey, welcome back. This is what I did. Two negative X's, one positive X. Three negative numbers, five positive numbers. The things that I can cancel out are, I can cancel out one variable because it's both positive and negative, and I can cancel out three numbers because again, there's three positives and three negatives. Those are opposites, so they equal zero. What I'm left with is, I'm gonna kind of put a box around that. I have two positive numbers and I have one negative variable. So I would say I have negative X plus two as what's left over, all right? 
And that's how you would solve using algebra tiles. Again, a visual way to represent these math problems. So quick recap, set it up, check them off, and write down what's left. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.